Hello and welcome to White Glove Reviews. In this video, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different than normal, and in this case, I'm going to be talking about Legos. And the first thing I want to talk about Lego related, and the main purpose of this video, is I want to talk about how to make a Lego sphere. And a Lego sphere is kind of weird in that it's not exactly as much of a sphere as you might think. The main issue is it's sort of a cubic sphere. And you can sort of further round out your Lego, your Lego sphere by adding like little things to it. And I'll show you how to do that. But the main, the main issue with a Lego sphere is you need to use a technique where you end up with studs on all six sides of the cube. And this technique is referred to as studs not on top. Or I shudder to mention it, but the abbreviation SNOT, S-N-O-T, was just stands for studs not on top. And you can use a lot of different pieces to achieve this effect. And I'll show you some of the pieces that you can use for various examples of, of spheres. And the first one I want to show you is I want to show you using these little pieces right here. And these pieces, let me consult my notes so I make sure I get the numbers right. I'll include a list in the description that has all these in it. This piece is piece 4595, and it's a 1 by 2 by 2 thirds brick, with, and it's a modified brick with studs on the sides. And anyway, that's this thing right here. And so what you can do with these, if you want to make a sphere, or you want to make something with the stud, you know, studs on all the sides, what you do is you place them, and this is a 4x4 plate, you place them on the corners. And so what you have is you have a stud coming out one side and a stud coming out here on this side. And then you just go around and repeat the process. Now these pieces just barely fit there. And for the sake of evenness, you're going to want to you know, make sure you have them face it the right way. Like so. And you'll end up with something like this. It looks like this. Where you have studs on the, going out the sides. And then what you're going to do is you'll just repeat the similar process for another one of these. Another one of the 4x4s. Like so. Like this and then all you do is you put on the sides and so you have a side that goes on here like so and you just you have what it is is these three studs will line up with the spots here here and the last stud like so and then you connect the other piece there and then you connect the next piece and the next piece and then you put the ends on, like so. Yeah, make sure my ends on it. And this is mostly a sphere. Now the only other thing is to put the the roundiness on it or make it more round. And I'm just using a couple of one by four plates and a two by two plate for like the top bump. Now, depending upon how you would do it, how you're going to do it, I might have come back in and put like a couple of two by twos there. I'm sorry, a couple of one by twos right here to sort of have like a, an X pattern. But, you know, that's one of those things that's kind of up to you. Now, one thing I do want to talk about about this particular example is if you're like me and kind of like to have things a little neat and tidy. I like to try and minimize the internal space for stuff. And so like what I did here is I popped off the ones that are holding these on. And so, you know, you can just take these off. And I'll show you what I mean by minimizing the internal space. If you wanted to, what you could do, let me grab a couple of these things, is I have some one by twos and a couple more 4x4s. Four four. Now what you can do if you want 
is you can actually put the one by two on the bottom of this, like so. And it goes from being basically a two third to a normal brick. And so if you pop these on here, on all of these, and well, you know, I probably should have taken care of this off camera, but it'll only take a second. So you pop all these on, like so. And I tried to use different colors. If you wanted to make these like match, you know, go with black one by twos. But I think it's easier to see what's going on if you have different colors for each of the pieces. And so I did try and do that when it was applicable. So you end up with these things where they have, they're sort of extended a little bit. And what you can do is if you mount them, oops, if you mount them on these, like so, on the on the four by four, and like that, and then it makes them a bit easier to manage when you're attaching them. So. You have these two little plates, and then you just attach. You just attach them here, like so. So you don't have to worry about like what we did, where you used one of these as sort of the basis for it. Now, if you're really in the mood to minimize the internal empty space in your sphere, what you can do is these are two by two inverted tiles, and you can pop these on the bottom, like so. And what you'll do is you will very much minimize the internal space you have between these two things. And now I'll show you. These two things will fit snugly. They can basically be sandwiched together like this. And then all you do is you pop on the two pieces, like so, and there is very little dead space, or very little empty space, in the center of your sphere. And you just pop on the pieces, and then you're good to go. Let's see. And you have a relatively solid sphere. Like so. So, it's not too bad, right? Now, if you wanted to do, like I said at the beginning, there's not you're not limited to just those particular pieces. And there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Because this one is a 4x4 four four sphere that has like little bumps on it. If you're really, really desperate, you can do a 3x3 three three sphere. And the way the 3x3 three three sphere is done, and this is kind of inconvenient, but what I use to do this is these little pieces in here are, let me consult my sheet. They are one by one bricks with studs on two sides adjacent. So 26604. Two, oh and these actually come in a surprising number of colors. And so what you can do is you just place these at the corners and you can just barely get this thing to pop together. I can tell you that it took me a couple of tries because every time I kept trying to put on one of the final plates, I'd, I'd push too hard and I'd pop off some of the internal bricks. So this is one of those ones that I'm going to come back. Oh, that's the top. <laughs> this is one of the ones where I'm going to come back and mess with this some more and fill in some of the blank space. The problem is there's not that much space right here to do anything. It's pretty much just like there's not much space right there. Eh, anyway. So, but you can do a 3x3 three three if you're so inclined. And when you're looking at 4x4s, four if you wanted to, you can do, you can use the, the, the one by, you can use the one by one bricks with the two studs adjacent. 
You can also use the one by one bricks with four studs adjacent if you want. Let me pop this off. And what you do is you can do it like this. I, what I did it is I did similar to the way I did the circle where I wanted zero empty space in the center. But if you didn't want to do it like that, what you could do, and I'll show you how to, I'll show you how to make one of these without using the internal panel. And all you do is you take these and you insert them where the top stud, oops, top stud goes in right here, like so, and line it up so it's nice and even, and then repeat for each of the different little corners, like so. And this is how, again, this is how you do this one, this with the three by three as well. Only I'm, I, I use the ones that only has studs on two sides. So you get a setup where it looks like this. And then you repeat it on the other one, and this will be your top and bottom of your sphere, or your cube, depending upon how you're feeling, depending on how much you want to round out your sphere. And so we have it like that, and then you just pop on the sides. And what you may want to do, what I found is. If you hold your finger like this, so you hold them down, you, it, it makes it a little easier to put them on until you get, and actually put on this one next. And for this one, just sort of press on the two pieces, press on these two pieces. And then for the last one, this is really the most inconvenient one. You gotta line these two up. And, oops. See, that one moved on me. It's being difficult, isn't it? There we go. Once you have this part done, it's pretty, it's relatively stable. And then so you just pop on the sides, and you're good to go. So that's probably the simplest, most straightforward way to do it. And then again, like you can do something like this, where you round it out a little bit. The, the main technique is getting it where the studs are on the outside. Now, you can do like I did and put in the plates. So, and I think I prefer the method where you have the where you have the the pieces inside because I think it just it makes putting it together much easier because you aren't you aren't dealing with these free floating pieces, and so. Just do it like that, and like that, and then I, it just makes it a lot more stable to pop the edges on. And like so. Now you can also use this is a six by six. If you are so inclined, you can actually. show you. They're, they're one by four bricks that have studs on the sides. And pretty much practically anything that gives you studs on the sides will help you make this happen. And with this all I did was I took four of these and an, another six by six plate and all you do is you pop these on the edges with the studs facing out. like so and you have the same thing Oops, you have the same thing on this one so you have two of these pieces very similar to the other setup and then you just pop on the sides or the top pretty much all of them now one of the things that that kind of is noticeable is this like this particular setup gives you a lot more, for lack of a better term, structural, like it's a lot more structurally sound because you have a bunch of points of connection. 
I think if I were to like actually plan on doing something like this, I would add a like a one by one of the one by one with the two sides adjacent here on these corners, just because you know to fill in the empty gaps. And so, oh, pop the two tops on like so. They're on the edges. Sure, they all line up. And there you go. And that's how you can make them. Um... Now, one of the issues with this is you're limited by the size. You need to have it basically, you have you can't use it for smaller than a four if you're using four. It, it you can't use it smaller than a six by six if you're using if you're gonna use four of the one by fours. There are some one by twos that have the same the same setup, and that are basically just like this piece, and you could make a smaller one with those if you were so inclined. Let's see, there's that one. Let's see if any of these are any different. Yeah, I already showed you that one. I already showed you that one. I have one of these that oh I think this is the one. Some of these I was just playing with. And this is the one that I wanted to show you. This is one using the. This one is done. I'll show you. This one is done using. Oh wow! Been attacked by a Lego. This one is done using the small one by one bricks and this is a one by one brick that only has studs on two sides so it's like uh, the studs are adjacent and that's um one by one brick with studs two sides adjacent so the two six six zero four and this list of parts is going to be in the description anyway so what I want to do with this one is I wanted it where there was no dead space inside the sphere and so all you got to do if you want to do this well, let me take apart one of these and I'll show you I did like I did for the other pieces I used the two by two inverted tiles for the bottom part and I kind of did this one a little weird I didn't use a I didn't use a panel I used um, I used one by fours and this is kind of a mess, but I'll show you what I did. You can easily do this one more cleanly, I think. Like maybe swap in some. Yeah, maybe not. Alright, so I'll take this whole thing apart and I'll show you what you gotta do to get. Eh. I don't know if this is an innovation or not. But I found that I find it generally helpful. If you have two of these and you have to take this to do this, you can just pop them like that apart. I don't know if that is useful to anyone or not, but I found it moderately useful when I discovered it. So, like if you have two plates stuck together, these things are the size difference is just enough that you can stick two of them together like this. And if you squeeze it, it'll pop them apart and that'll at least give you enough space to pop them, to separate them with that. All right. So what I did in this giant mess of stuff that I have is, all right. So what I did was I took one by fours. I took one one by four and another one by four and I placed the the one by twos on the corners. I'm sorry, the one by ones on the corners with the studs facing out like so. And then to give it a little more structure, I took a, a two by four plate and I did like so. And so you end up with you end up with this, which gives you a pretty stable base for that. And then after that all I did was I filled in blank spaces. So for example, I'll put this here, and 
then I popped in the bottom pieces oops then I popped in the bottom pieces like so and like so that's not the right piece ah I popped in the bottom pieces like so so that takes care of that and then you just fill in the gaps with the other stuff so a one by two and uh, one by two and I lose the piece somewhere I did okay and then there there And again, you can minimize these pieces, the number of pieces here if you wanted to. You could actually swap this for like, you could keep these two one by twos and swap with the two by four and take care of that. And then you just pop on the plates. Oops. You just pop on, I'm sorry, you pop on the tiles. And you have one of the two pieces you need to make a sphere with no like dead space inside it and then again all you do is pop on the sides like so and then and if you wanted to you could I ended up having this as just sort of a cube with tiles on the outside if you wanted to you could I thought about doing one where I had rounded tiles but I haven't gotten around to testing that yet anyway uh, this is let's see that's one two three four methods I think we did the, the one by one the one by one bricks with the adjacent with one by one with the four the bigger group bricks yeah so that's four methods four different methods to create a roughly cubic sphere out of Legos. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you have any suggestions or questions or anything you'd like to see Lego related or otherwise, let me know in the comments. Anyway, I hope you all have an excellent day.